as I learn more and more about my calculator, the TI Inspire CX CAS, I'm finding out that this calculator can do a lot more work than I ever expected, which is very nice because for my AP Chemistry students, this is a neat trick that they hopefully will be able to use either from this point on, during AP exam, or even during some labs in the future. But this calculator is very nice in that it can actually do a lot of neat things. And I want to show you a neat trick that I just learned not too long ago. So turn your calculator on, and then what we want to do is we want to create some spreadsheets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going, I've already collected the data. I already have the data um, right here. And what I'm proposing on doing is inputting the data in. I want to find out if these reactions or reactants are either a zero order, first order, or second order reactant. And I actually have three different types of experiments because I know that these uh, produce some very, very good results. So what this is going to do is we're going to make three separate graphs for each separate uh, set of data. And I want to take the concentration versus time. And then I want to take the natural log of the concentration versus time. And I also want to take the inverse of the concentration versus time. And if you've studied kinetics, then each of these graphs, depending on where you have your positive or negative slope, will indicate what the order of the reactant is. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, first thing you want to do, if you hadn't done it already, is go ahead and start a new, um, start a new page. And since it's already up on here, so if we go here, we turn that on. We want to start a new document. So you go to, to one, or you can press new document here. And what we want to do is we want to make a spreadsheet. So we get a spreadsheet that looks like this. And the nice thing is, this is actually our label, this is our variable indicator, and this is where we input all of our data. And we also have a formula bar down here. So what I want to do first is input the data. And it's really a taxing process, so I'll speed it up for you here. All right, so there's my first set of data. Let me get input the next set of data. So what I want to do is I want to start a new window. So since I have the 1.1, I'm going to come over here and do control doc. In other words, you'll notice up here it says new page. So control doc gives me the option for another page. So again, I want to do lists and spreadsheet. And it'll pop up here shortly. So now I have my second page and I want to enter the data in. So I'll do that quickly. So there's my second set of data. Let's enter the third set of data. So again, I want to go Control, New Page, and then again, my List and Spreadsheets. So page three, third set of data. So I have my third set of data logged in. So now that I have all my data input in, I want to go back and define what these variables represent. So this is my first set of data. There's my second set of data, page two. It's a little slow. I apologize for that. And there's my third set of data. So what I want to do is I want to call these very simple. I just want to call them concentration of solution A, concentration of solution B, concentration of solution C for the respect of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to call these just C O N C and you'll notice that it I go underscore A. And again, these are variables that you can design. Um, actually, I'm not going to put anything in there, but that would be a variable uh, definition which would show up down here. I don't want to identify that since these are my concentrations. And then my time I just want to call that time, and this is for my 
reactant two, so I'm going to call that time A. And then over here, now I need to make three graphs. I need to make one that's a concentration of A versus time. I want to need to do one that's a natural log of the concentration of A versus time. And a third one that's the inverse of the concentration versus time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this LN of CONC underscore A. And again, you get to define what this label is, but just remember it's something that you want to keep simple so that you can retrieve it later on. Now, I am going to actually define the label down here in the variable. So down here in the formula bar, I want to find out the natural log of all these concentrations, but I don't want to have to go to it. I don't want to have to use my calculator. I want the calculator to find it out for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in LN, because that's a natural log function, and open up your parentheses, and it should show here shortly. It's a little slow. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the title for this, the CONC underscore A. So CONC underscore A, close the parentheses, hit enter, and it does all that work for you. So we've already got all of the natural log values here. And again, anything that has, if you take the natural log of a value that's less than one, we should get some negative values. So that's looking good. Now, I also want to take the inverse. So I'm going to do, I'm going to go call that inverse, just I-N-V-R-S, and underscore A. So again, I'm just identifying the label so I can refer to that later. In the next step, now I want to actually determine the formula. Sometime it'll pop up there. And down here I want to make sure that I actually take the inverse of the value. So I'm going to do 1 divided by, open up the parentheses down here, and again, I'm doing the inverse of the concentration, so I just go CONC underscore A, and then close those parentheses. And once I have that, then once I hit enter, it should give me the inverse of all those values. And I've already got my data. And I didn't have to sit here and type all the information in for each of these, and you'll notice that I have like eight or nine values there, and they're all correct. Okay, so I'm finished with that one, so let's do the same thing with these guys. I'm going to push the wireless away and let's put our information in the way you would do it on your calculator. So I'm going to go C. Okay, so now I have my data in place, which is very, very nice, because now I want to create the graphs. I want to see what these graphs look like. So I've got my data for my first concentration, my second concentration, and my third, so A, B, and C. So now what I want to do is I want to, I want to make three new pages for each one of these. So I'm going to come over here and do Control, Doc, get a new page, but I'm going to go to Data and Statistics. So I'm going to click there. And now I get something that looks like this. And notice that the caption comes up as the concentration of A. So if you didn't want A, you could pick either B or C. But I like that first one to be A since the first set of data is A. Let's make a, another page. So another control new page. Maybe. So there we go. We're going to do another data and statistics. And this one is actually going to be for the concentration of B. And notice that the data points kind of changed a little bit. And then I want to make a third page for the concentration of C, or the C data. So another page, again, data and statistics. So I've got my values here, and I definitely want to change this. I want to change that to concentration of C. So now I've got my three graphs. And I, again, I can move back and forth this way. Okay. And notice that it gets you back to your data 
which is nice if you need to look at something. Or you can move this way as well. Don't forget, you can move that way. All right, so here's what we're going to do. So I've got my data here for my A, for my concentration of A, or my reactant A. What I want to do is I want to set up my variables, because you can see that it says along here, click to add a variable, click to add a variable. Well, we know that time needs to be along the x-axis. So since this is concentration of A, I'm going to choose constant or the time for A. So once I hit that, all my data points, which were kind of randomly scattered throughout, organize themselves. Let me go and undo that again. So they'll come back to their spot as soon as the computer catches up here. Maybe. <laughs> okay. So this is where all the data points were actually placed, except now we want to get these things in order. So again, you just click on time A, and it moves all those data points into the place that they need to go. And then I'm going to check, and I want to do the concentration of A versus time first. So if I go concentration of A versus time, then I get this nice linear pattern here with a negative slope. So if you know that you have a negative slope for the concentration versus time, what do you think your order is? Well, don't answer that yet. Let's take a look at the other scenarios. So you have your concentration of A. Let's go with the inverse of A. What does that give us? That gives us a nice little acceleration curve, which is not anything that helps us to determine the order. And let's change it to the natural log of A. Maybe it'll pop up here if I can get it. <laughs> okay, so the inverse or the natural log of A, so I would click on that one, and that gives me kind of a deceleration. So we don't care about any of the curves. So getting back to the concentration of A, that puts everybody in nice alignment. Now, I know there's a way that we can actually determine what that slope is by adding a line, but I'm not quite there yet. So I apologize for not being able to do that. All right, so there's our first order, or I mean our, our concentration of A giving us our first order, which in this case is a zero order reactant. So let's take a look at the next set of data. Okay, so here's our concentration of B. So again, um, and it doesn't matter which one you choose first. So if you wanna come over here and do, okay, the concentration of B, notice how all the points rearrange themselves. In fact, I may have two points that are very close together here. So again, if you wanted to see that, how that moved around, and it looks like I do have, oh shoot, where are you? 0.44 and 0.45, okay, so that makes sense. So if we wanna look at our thing here again, we can put the concentration of B, so we'll line up all our points, and then again, we always wanna make sure our x-axis is time, so since this is B, we're gonna put it in that regard. So now we get this nice deceleration curve which really doesn't tell us anything at this point. So let's take a look at the next one. Computer's really fast. So let's go with the, the natural log of B versus time. And it gives us still a bit of a deceleration curve here. So we still haven't determined our order yet because we, again, we're looking for a slope here, a nice straight line. So if we take the inverse of B versus time, then our data points kind of line up in a nice straight positive slope here. So this would represent that concentration B is a second order reactant. Pretty cool. So let's look at the next one. Oh, nope, 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 sorry. I don't want to do that. I want to go backward. So undo that. So let's go control page. Okay, so let's look at concentration C. So again, we'll do the time. Doesn't matter which one you do. So time C moves everybody around. It's just real cool to see that initially, but time C. And you'll notice that that label goes away up here once you determine what the time is for, what that one variable is for. So let's see here. So we'll click. Oh, I finally got back. So we'll go with the concentration of C versus time. Gives a nice little deceleration there. Uh, let's look at the inverse of C versus time. Gives us a nice acceleration curve there, which again doesn't tell us what the order is. And then looking at the natural log of C, and the computer kind of is slow today, so we'll let it think about it for a second. Talk amongst yourselves while this thing figures itself out. Ah, there we go. And we've got a nice negative slope. 
So right now, the concentration of C versus time, I'm sorry, the natural log of concentration of C versus time gives me a, a, a negative slope here, so that's indicative of a first order reactant. Looking at this one, we have the inverse of the concentration of B versus time gives a positive slope. That's indicative of a second order reactant. And then looking at this one, we have the concentration of A versus time giving a negative slope, which represents a zero order reactant. So again, we have a zero, a second, and a first order reactant. I want to thank Mr. Record for enlightening me on how to find the slope. Um, I actually recorded him, but somehow, some way, the video was corrupted and I can't put it in the video, so I, I truly apologize for not having him in the video. He did a great job. I hope I can emulate what he did on the previous recording to show you how you can get the slope or the K. Now, notice that this is our straight line, and if you go to the menu and click on there, and we want to look at analyze and we're do, going to do a linear regression so we click on six and we want to pick one of these two actually the top one is probably the best one that we would want to show here and by clicking on that and there we go so there it shows our slope now we can take this value and move it around now what's oh, darn it bring it back What's nice about that is that when we look at this, our value here, which is the Y, is our negative slope. So that's actually what our K value is. It's a negative 0 0.01553. And again, depending on the order, so it's a natural log of the concentration of C versus the time of C. So our units for this would be one over um, seconds or whatever our time is for this one. So there's how we can actually find our K value. Uh, Mr. Record already did it for the first graph, which is a concentration of A versus time. And notice that we also get a negative value here again. And let's take a look at this one. So if I wanted to find out what that slope was, then I, again, I go to menu, go to analyze. Again, a regression. And we're gonna show the linear so in this case, we have a positive value, and the K value again is 0 0.0155. And notice that in this case, that all the Ks were the same value. I wonder why, uh, because again, this was all the same reaction with the three different concentrations. But again, I stated earlier in the lecture during the notes that the K values are always a constant or that they're always a positive value. It just depends on the slope and the equation that gives it its negative or positive sign. So this is really nice because it helps to show us what our K value is. So if you're given a set of data and you don't know what the K value is, we can input that in and do a menu, analyze, regression, find out what that value is. Now it asks us to, show, to hide the line, but if we wanted to hide it, we could find out what it actually is. So that's really nice because in our lab that we just worked out, um, some of you had some issues finding the K value and it would require some incredible calculus, but with this, it'll actually give you your K value. Kind of cool. So again, menu, analyze, regression, show linear. And there it cuts through the best points, so it gives us our slope now.